Unlike my normal videos, which are very highly scripted, I'm going to do this one this totally live coding. So there may be a lot of errors, I may have to do a lot of edits, and you're going to see the process as it actually happens. Here's the pseudocode that I developed over the previous video, and now I need to make a working program out of it with all the features that I want. Step one for me is to get a program that works, period. Once it works, then I can start adding the extra stuff later on. So for example, on this read the age and make sure it's in the range 0 to 130, for right now, I'm just going to read the age and make sure that that part works. I'm going to put up the prompt, which according to my document here should say, enter customer's age or zero to quit. And then I need to do a scan F into the age variable. Similar thing here for reading the day of the week. I need to print out the prompt, which is enter day of week with one equals Monday, seven equals Sunday, and then do a scan F in today. Calculating the ticket price based on the day, I'll leave that till later. I'll leave all this error checking here and here until later. For what I have now, everything should compile and work. Well, let's find out. Let's do a build and see what happens. It compiled successfully, and let's run it. So if the customer's age is 25, Ticket price is $8. I get to do another age. Let's put in 12. And now it's asking for a day of week. I put in a 4, let's say. The ticket price still says $8 because I haven't changed any of that code yet. That's okay. I just want to see if the program's working in general. Is my do while loop working? Well, let's try that out. Put in a 0, and the program should end, and it does. So things are looking good at this point. I'm happy with the results so far. Well, not entirely. I would really like to have an extra blank after where it, excuse me, an extra blank line after where it says the ticket price. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in a printf of backslash n, give a blank line for, um, spacing and readability. Yeah. Let's rebuild it and run it again just to make sure that that works. So if the customer's age is 12, day of week is 3, price is 0, customer's age 74, price is $8. Okay, that's looking perfectly nice. This is probably the next easiest thing to do. Calculate the ticket price based on what day it is. We've done that if statement before, namely if the day is equal to 6 or the day is equal to 7, a weekend, then the price is $6. On all the other days of the week, the price is $4.50. Again, this is the way I develop programs. I don't try and write the whole thing at once. Every time I add something new, I test it with that new thing to make sure that things are still going all right. Let's build and run. Move this up here a little bit on the screen. If the customer's age is 29, costs $8. If the customer's age is, let's say, 14, and they come in on a Saturday, it's $6. If they're 14 and they come in on Monday, Ticket price is four fifty, so that's all working. The part that isn't done yet is this error checking to make sure that something's in the range zero to one thirty, and making sure that it's in the range one to seven. That turns into a do while loop. So I'm going to have loops inside of loops here. Let's think of what has to happen here. I definitely want to do this part. I want to read the age. And I want to do this as long as I have bad data. So as long as you give me something that I can't handle, I have to keep 
this is one of these things I'm going to keep asking you until I get an answer that I like. What's my condition? Well, as long as the age is less than zero or the age is greater than 130, that's bad data. I can use that here as well. If the age is less than zero or the age is greater than 130, then I can print an error message. Age must be in range 1 to 130 or 0 to quit. And I need to backslash n there. So now I took that single printf and scanf, wrapped it into a loop so that I can repeatedly ask for input until I get something that I like. It builds properly. Let's run it, and now let's put in a negative 2. Perfect. If I put in something like 150, what about 131? Excellent. If I put in the customer's age as 1, then everything works as normal. Good, that part's working. I have to do something similar here for the day of the week, for Monday through Sunday. This code here is going to have to be wrapped into a do-while loop also. I'm going to keep doing this until I get an answer that I like. So I have to keep doing this as long as the day is less than 1 or the day is greater than 7. That's bad data, I have to ask again. And similarly here, I'll use that same condition in my if statement. If the day is less than 1 or the day is greater than 7, then I'll print my error message which says day of week must be in range 1 through 7. And let's build that and run it. If I give an age like 14 and I put in a negative 1 for the day or a 0 for the day or an 8 for the day, won't let me do it. I have to have something that's in range. I want to check at the limits. I want to check with 1 and 7. I want to make sure that I didn't accidentally say that 7 was a bad data element. And it turns out good. 7 works fine. Let's check to see that 1 is still valid. 1 is still valid. So it looks like things are working fine now. Oh, there's one thing I didn't test. I have all of this stuff with age less than 16. None of that affects the situation when the age is greater than or equal to 16. And theoretically, that should still work. But I'm paranoid, and I'm going to check it anyway. If somebody is 49, OK, good. The ticket price still works great. And now I have the program working exactly the way I wanted to, the way I planned it. The only thing I might want to do here is change the error message for age. If the age is less than zero, I might want to have one message for, hey, you can't give me negative numbers. And if it's greater than 130, I'm going to say, hey, that's way too big. So I want two different error messages for the two different kinds of age errors you might make. Now, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to get rid of the code that's already there. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into a comment C will ignore it, but it's still going to be in the source code. That way, in case I screw something up completely and my two-error message code doesn't work, no problem, I can always go back to this old code by removing the slash star and star slash. No harm, no foul, as they say. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, okay, if the age is less than zero, then I have no negative numbers. Otherwise, if the age is greater than 130, that's just unreasonable. There's my pseudocode. Again, I went sort of to pseudocode stage to cement into my mind that, yeah, this seems like the right approach. And now I'll replace that with the actual error messages. 
age cannot be negative. And here, sorry, but we allow a maximum age of 130 only. That's not the best English I've ever written, and maybe I can come back later and edit it and make it sound a little better, but for now, it'll do. Let's save that, build it, and run the program again. And this time, if I give a negative 2, age cannot be negative. If I give something that's way too big, and again, I'll test the limits, 1 and 130 should be allowed, and it is. Uh, I was about to quit the program, but I just realized I had, didn't try 131. 131 should not be allowed, so let me check to make sure that it works at that boundary condition. Always test the boundaries, because that's where things can always go a little bit weird for your programs. Cool, 131 is not allowed exactly as I anticipated. Now I can quit the program, and there it is, finished. At this point, if I wanted to, I could get rid of this comment here, but it doesn't hurt to keep it in. You might be thinking, wow, this program is really getting pretty long and it's hard to keep it all in my head at once. Hold that thought. When we discuss functions later on in the course, we're going to see a solution to the problem of having a program that has grown beyond our capacity to keep it all in our minds all at once. And that's the process of writing a program. I started with a plan. I started with figuring out what should it look like when you run the program. Then I wrote the pseudocode. Then I made the code work at the most basic level. And then I added all the extra features.